Alright, this time around we're going to take a look at the character's trigger options. So, for the character, there's a, one extra option that's available for him, and it's actually the triggering on and off the state. It's at, a, it's at a basic level right now, it'll just continue to get refined, but for the things that we do have available for the character, um, if you want to be able to use the trigger just like the other, op uh, like the other objects, uh, you'll enable the trigger through it. And then you can have the option for unlimited or repeat. And we're going to say by any player can trigger this one. The state to which the character can be triggered, we'll say to start with, we'll go ahead and start with the by trigger, meaning that if one object moves into another object, it triggers it. And then we'll, the new option that we have available for it, when it comes to the player, this is going to be the player state. So it's going to be saying, is the player going to be active um, before, or is the player going to be active during the uh, triggering state? Will it be turned off? So how we'll start it off with, we'll just go through each one of these and you kind of, we'll go through them so you can see the differences that uh, each one of them make with the character. Um, to start with, we'll just say that on activate, we're going to disable uh, the other player. So when this player is activated, the other player will be deactivated. And then what we can also do is say, down here we can say, enable this player after things are done, or enable other player after things are done. And we'll look at each one so you can see how they work, but we'll start with just this one to begin with. And then the other option here is the trigger range. Notice that right now it's around the box. Now, uh, if you have your character where you can walk through them, then uh, there's no reason to have to actually expand the box for it. If you have it where it's locked in, then you may want to make sure you have a uh, uh, left and the right a little bit further out so that the character can actually tr be triggered and can trigger the other objects. Alright, so we'll have it set for this for this character. Let's use the eyedropper tool here and make a copy of that character. So for this character, you can do two things. You can actually enable the player and have it set to a different ID um, or you can disable it and have it set to the same one. We're going to start with this one so you can see how it works out. Is that if you have a character like this one and say it's the main player and you want him to control another character during the game you can set the second character to an to the disabled state in zero and that way he has to actually walk over and turn the character on and then you get to control this character so we have this off this on uh, set to zero and then we'll go ahead and go out of this state he's the same property meaning that when this character, the one on the left, walks over to him. So when I go over to here and they trigger the box, I have now triggered this one to turn on, and now I can move him around. So this is all using the same joystick, meaning that it's the ID zero. When I get done with this character, if I go and trigger this one, I turn this one off now, and then this one gets to move around this way. So basically, it's just a simple switch to go back and forth and to be able to choose different characters during the game and actually say you want to control this one or control the other one. Alright, so that's the first look at it, which is just simply using that first option. And uh, we'll run through the other three and then combinations of them so that you can see uh, the uh, kind of the in-depth of uh, uh, variants that you can apply with it.